Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and uh, I have got a fantastic match for you for round five of the fourth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. Now, uh, we've seen a lot of really interesting decks today, and shockingly, we have yet to see Ad Emancipator and Eldlich. And, for what it's worth, I am doing my best to continue that trend. This round we have two X1 individuals, one playing a deck that we've seen a lot of in the uh, graph uh, that's been on screen between matches, and one that we've seen none of because the deck defies explanation. We've got Dunkoro, the last living generator pilot, everyone else has either dropped or is out of contention, and Felix Wynn, who is X1 on Goki. Now, I don't know what the goal of the Goki deck is, but I think it likely involves uh, the Great Ogre? I assume. It's very hard to kind of piece together. So, you and I will go on this learning experience together at the same time, chat. Uh, so, I will just let them know that I'm ready, and I will transition you over there. Alright, they are about to fire, and, um... Whew, pretty excited. <laughs> So, uh, taking a quick look at Felix's list, um, it, it's mostly the stuff you would expect to be in this deck, right? Uh, a lot of cards that are specifically in there to enable um, uh, Isolde, and a lot of Warrior Good Stuff Link cards, you know? Uh, nothing really too surprising. What'll be surprising is what they do with it. Uh, looks like the Generator player won the die roll, and oof, no way to get to stage turn one. Looks like they're probably going to have to flip a boss fight in order to go into something like a Har. It looks like their opponent is leading with a normal Goki Suprex, and the last time I saw this, oh boy, it, it gave me nightmares. <clears throat> Say the line, Bart. The president of Generator must be recognized. And the Generator player flipping Book of Moon! Wow, this is such a fantastic inclusion in the deck. I think Book of Moon is criminally underplayed, but with so many absolutely chonk and combo decks out, uh, enabling, uh, the, or stopping the activation of a Link Summon, or the start of a Link Summon, is extremely important, and, uh, Book of Moon is a card that does that fantastically. Unfortunately, the boss fight will be met with an Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, but that's not the end of the world. Generator can probably find another way through this. You can only activate one boss fight per turn, so if you have a second, you know, um, we're just moving on from there. Unfortunately, you are able to activate Ash in response to boss fight, even though... Even though it activates a field spell directly from your deck, uh, I believe that... Yeah, you can Ash it because it adds a card from the deck to the hand, namely a card to your opponent's hand. They draw one. So this is looking pretty good so far. Uh, the Goki, still not destroyed, uh, will have to flip up. And upon normal summon of the second monster, I think we're likely to see the activation of the Pankratops. If that set card is another Book of Moon or a Generator boss fight, I would feel pretty good about this. Yeah, I think it is likely he did not have another Goki to summon off of Suprex, and for what it's worth, this list is extremely goki light. You know, um, as Goki decks, back when Goki was meta, uh, moved towards like 9 main deck Goki's maximum, often they would not activate the effect of Suprex, just using it to plus into powerful spells. Dunkoro says, it is an interesting game here, and uh, this reveals why it has been bad so far. Um, likely there's a couple of generators in this hand. So Boss Quest is going to get that uh, Lopter right out of the grip, and then we're going to be able to uh, activate Stage, and I mean, if you are the uh, Generator player, you are absolutely just thrilled by the concept that this game has lasted as long as it has. You are 100% the control deck and ready to turn the corner, and Stage is a fantastic way to get that done. Suprex will trigger here. And that's going to get... Whoa, I've literally never read that card. What, what was that? Goki Guts? Okay, so it can't be destroyed by battle if it's in defense. And uh, you can make all Goki monsters you control gain 200 attack. I see why I've never heard of this card. It's terrible. The generator player going to set a card. I think we know what that is before passing it back. And then in draw phase, we'll activate the effect of stage. Stage summons from deck. And from here, we should be able to win the game quite easily. Here comes Lopter. Ooh, I kind of like Lopter here. A uh, Lopter makes your tokens and all generators you control gain 1,000 attack and defense during your opponent's turn only, and more importantly, can be tributed during the main phase to tag into any generator, um, provided they're level 9. So we can go into Utgarda or Har as needed. 
Leading with a dark ruler no more, though, will make that much more difficult. He should have activated stage so it could have triggered off the search from Suprex. Unfortunately, it does not trigger during the damage step. All right, so we're going to go from Guts into the Blue Mountain Butter Spy and just three free summons. Uh, this is really crusty. Um, you would need two Books of Moon to stop this. Lopter is going to activate here, tributing a token. Why would they do that, I wonder? I invite you to speculate. What's the generator's record? X1. Both these players are X1. If they win this match, they will be one game away from topping. Uh, but at this point, they are fighting for their tournament life. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fire off a Solda here, and it's been a while since I've seen this activated. Chain blocked by Goki Guts. All right, so that's going to add a Headbat to hand. Headbat, of course, is the one that can be specialed from the hand, provided you discard a Goki, and you'll likely be able to discard the card that Solda is searching. What the hell is that? I've never read any of these Gokis. Iron Claw? During the damage step, when your Goki monster battles an opponent's monster, you can set this card in your hand to the graveyard. And a fantastic way to do this as well. If you've got a boss fight set, you can wait until the activation of the Dark Ruler no more before going into another boss stage. That'll trigger getting a Har from deck. And unfortunately, Har isn't able to activate here, but likely will be able to do to on the next Goki activation. It's a pretty ingenious little way that um, a generator can get something going, even under Dark Ruler no more, and a big reason why uh, the deck is worth considering. You know, it's not often that a control deck that uh, wins by having monsters on the field also has an innate uh, resistance to the most powerful boss monster effect negator in the format. Guts and Claw are in Ecto. That's cool. I, I don't know if it's good, but that's cool. So by discarding the Claw, we can go into Headbat. But by triggering Headbat, we're going to be able to trigger Claw. And we'll be able to negate the uh, follow-up uh, Goki Searcher. So this is a hard position for Felix to be in. Of course, being five cards up in hand is pretty fantastic. You've also got to kind of close this out this turn. If you aren't able to resolve a big uh, Goki push... Your opponent is likely going to be able to stop you on their following turn um, by starting to loop generators. And ooh, activating Phoenix Blade on this Isolde, revealing that unfortunately it looks like they've drawn uh, too many of their equip spells to actually get anything done. They can walk over the Lopter, which is not for nothing. I mean, Lopter's a very good card and getting it off the field is important. But that Har is just staring them in the face. Chats figured it out. Uh, you play terrible cards like Guts and Iron Claw because they're bad, but they're better than Bear Hug. All right, it looks like a pass, just too afraid of Har to extend to anything or has drawn the additional uh, equips. Oh, that is a brick and a half. Chat says, stop calling it Ecto. It is Ecto. It, it, the, the way you can remember it, this is pretty easy, is that it's like the cooler. All right, so we're going to walk into Isolde here with Har. Uh, one of the frustrating things about Har is not only is it a huge negation powerhouse, it also hits like a truck. 3,000 attack closes out games very quickly. All right, next going to attack into this copy of Butter Spy, and, you know, that's not a big deal <laughs> for the Warrior deck. Uh, they would rather have cards off the field than have them on, um, but... Having a clear board opens them up to, I guess, exactly evenly matched in this specific instance. Looks like they don't have it, and uh, a quick pass back. Uh, four cards in hand into five is less frightening than uh, the seven we were dealing with next last turn under Dark Ruler. Now, notably, a follow-up Dark Ruler here is extremely bad for the Generator player. Uh, unlikely that they have the third boss fight, I believe, the third and final. Come on. Nope, stop going through phases. Yeah, unlikely they have the third and final, so a Dark Ruler No More here would be absolutely devastating. Alright, we're going to normal summon a Goki Twist Cobra. So as you attribute a Goki and then target a Goki to gain the attack of the other Goki, but more importantly it's a warrior so it'll trigger the Blue Mountain Butter Spy in the hand. So we can go into a Solda again, but is that going to be good enough? I, I would consider activating Pankratops here. I mean, I don't even know if you're afraid of a Solda, given that your opponent had one last turn and just didn't resolve it. All right, it's Headbat time. We're going to discard this copy of Iron Claw we knew was in the hand, and we'll uh, special this Headbat. 
That's a big twist, Cobra, but still not big enough to get over any of the major threats. The activation in Graveyard of the Phoenix Blade means that it's possible that it could walk over something like the uh, Pankratops. At the very least, it can threaten it, and then in uh, Main Phase 2 can go into Isolde. Um, but that Generator Har on board is just staring down these Chunguses. From the generator player's perspective, if they feel particularly threatened, they can also go from Lopter into Utgarda, use Utgarda's effect, and then keep Har live by tributing the Utgarda. I mean, things are not looking great. This is going to attempt to uh, trigger the Har's effect. Prioritizing the Twist Cobra search here. That's interesting. So the Har is going to remain on field, and then as soon as this uh, Twist Cobra resolves, the Har's second effect is going to trigger. That's going to uh, force the opponent to send a card from the uh, hand or field to the graveyard. I think they'll likely pick Bat. A monster, I believe. I think Bat is the only one. Did they send the Blade? Okay, they sent the Blade, so there's one unknown in hand. So the Bat will trigger here. And, uh, I don't know, it, it seems pretty cut and dry. Suprex is fine, but provided you just uh, banish one of the monsters from this rematch, I think that's the end of the game. You could even destroy one of the monsters from the rematch. They've already used their normal summon. Depends on how hard you want to uh, commit. Book of Moon again! This card is so incredible versus this deck! Wow, and doing duty in this match as it's been doing all day, setting copies of Jet Synchron and the like. Oh, and that's got to be the end of the game. In main phase one, you can use a Lopter to go into Har, you can get another Lopter. I mean, you'll have monsters for days. Or, uh, not Har, sorry, uh, Mardell. Electing just to keep the Lopter on field now, walking over the Suprex. Now, let's see, does Har trigger in damage step? Ooh, it does. I mean, it has the potential to. I don't, I don't know if it actually can trigger in damage step. Alright, we're going to trigger Suprex here, so I guess we'll find out pretty much immediately. It's Octo Stretch. Alright, looks like, as expected, cards uh, without the ability to trigger in damage step don't trigger in damage step. You'll learn something new every day, chat. We'll destroy this copy of Guts as well. So the best thing our opponent can be getting is, like, I don't know, rematch? Oh, this can't be destroyed. It's in defense position. Oh, wow, that's just ridiculous. Okay, well... I suppose that's the end of the Guts. So, uh, you pretty much gotta be on Utgarda at some point. We're gonna go from, uh, Lopter into, I would guess Mardell, but I guess we'll find out. Yep, Mardell. And Mardell is able to get either Room, or the third fight, or, uh, depending on your hand, a quest... Or another Lopter. Ooh, True King of All Calamities is pretty strong, too. I hear that's a good card. So it looks like we're actually out of Mardell searches. Uh, this TK is going to have to do it. And getting Har from deck here in order to trigger the effect of boss stage. We can activate um, this uh, Calamities at any time. It looks like we're doing that. I imagine Earth will be the pick. Yep. <laughs> and MBT made fun of Guts. I guess Book of Moon isn't that powerful after all if it just puts this monster in defense position. Alright, it is Rota time. Here comes Guts to hand again. Guts doing a lot this match. I don't know if it's been doing good stuff, but... So, uh, this will trigger Har, of course. Har will be able to send a card. It looks like it's sending Suprex. We're gonna set a card. Hey, I would bet anything that that's another Guts. So, True King of All Calamities, all it does is prevent attacks. It has nothing to say about defense position marshmallows. 
So if the generator player is not on Utgarda, I, I don't actually know if they can out this card. They'd have to find another 9 and go into something like an Earth Slicer? It's another Guts, as expected. Can't be destroyed by spells... by, uh... by battle. Wow, is... is Marshmallow Defense going to win this game for the Goki player? This is going... Th if, if this is how the Goki player wins the game, congrats to them for isolating their win condition and playing into it, but, like... Generator player, you gotta be on one copy of Utgarda for scenarios like this. Oh, they are. Okay. So, there's Utgarda, and uh, that, that likely will be the end of the game. Uh, Utgarda, of course, the boss of Delusion, who can banish uh, individual cards your opponent controls. Gonna go for uh, this copy of True King of All Calamities, Calling Earth again. And it would be very hard to envision a scenario in which Generator isn't able to walk with this over the course of a couple of turns. Is that all three copies of Guts? Have we have we safely dispatched all Guts? Let me find out. At end step, of course, we'll use Delusion here uh, to banish this Guts. Maybe the set card even, I don't know. This is actually a pretty interesting choice. Either of them are fine. It's just a matter of if you have other removal for Guts. It looks like they are going for the set card, and it's the Octo Stretch, which will not trigger because it was banished. All right, I'm I'm putting my faith in you. You've got to have a way to out the guts. So an Earth Slicer here would win the game. This is the final guts. Infinite impermanence. Well, you know that'll do it too. Oh man, is that a condition? There's no way that's a condition. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's an effect. That's going to trigger Guts. Of course, uh, they'll get a Goki to the hand. They're going to get rematch, but uh, there's about a 0% chance that card is going to resolve. Get in for uh, all but 100, and then is there a 9 that deals damage? Can we go into, like, very large Gagaga Cow Cowboy? Gagaga Cowboy with two pistols? I think Cowboy actually already has two pistols. Are both hero players uh, dropped? I haven't actually checked the hero players. I am pretty sure they are not in, though. Gimmick Puppet Burns. All right. Call SPS. He already has two pistols. Dang. Dug a cowboy with four pistols. See, now you're thinking, chat. 999 a cowboy. That's that's the best comment. All right. Here comes Lopter. And, of course, that can translate into anything. But uh, likely the generator player is pretty much out of targets you know, we've been through two Haars, which is usually the number they play. We've been through, I think, two and a half or three Lopters. Uh, we've been through the one Utgarda, the one Mardell. We get a Hala, maybe. All right, so here comes the rematch and a 0% possibility that that resolves. What's the Goki's record? X1. Both these players are X1, playing for their tournament life. Oh, wow. Letting it resolve here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then afterwards, going to Utgarda the Guts. I kind of like this. This is pretty funny. Like, you know the location of the third Guts. So you might as... Like, the only way you lose this game is if Guts continues to be summoned and you run out of ways to deal with it. So if you uh, Utgarda the Gutses, you can get them all banished. And oh god. That's a one for one. You can see a Neos sent to the graveyard. One guess as to what that's used for. Oh, and uh, it looks like we've we've all collectively remembered that uh, Phoenix Blade was in the graveyard. Uh, I certainly forgot. If there's another Cerberus, this might be all right. It's a way to get, like, Har off the board. Or at least prompt its activation. I'm trying to think what we could go into here. Verte Anaconda sounds good, but of course loses to Har. And more importantly, you just sent the Neos to the graveyard, so I don't think you have the material in deck for it. It is going to be IP Mascarena that's going to trigger a couple of instances of, um... Goki's in the grave. He has no life points to use Verte. That's a good point. At only 100, uh, seems unlikely. 
All right, so we're going to see Suprex and Octo Stretch activate here for a Suprex. How many Gokies is this player on? And a Twist Cobra. That'll trigger the horror, of course. And they'll have to send one of those to the graveyard. I guess probably the Twist Cobra. Sending the Suprex. That's interesting. Play the second Neos. No! We're going to normal summon a copy of Twist Cobra, and, uh... Yeah, I don't know what you do from this position. Is there a three that cleans this? You kind of need another one to go into something like Zero Boros. Nightmare Unicorn. That's interesting. So Unicorn can get rid of anyone in particular. Har can negate Unicorn, but can't destroy it because it's been made with IP Mascarena. So you're better off letting that go to the graveyard, and then they can crash into Delusion. If that last card in hand is a super powerful defensive option, maybe? But I, I don't think that's very likely. Dunkoro correctly revealing to his opponent, yeah, I'm basically out of generators in deck. I appreciate you putting one back so I can have tokens again. No, it looks like we're just going to walk into the delusion. Maybe an evenly matched? That would be okay, but if it's evenly matched, we know the last card in hand is just the equip spell. We can keep the horror and then just attack. Lightning Storm! Whoa! That's an extremely good one! Oh my gosh! And they might have just found the out. I mean, we expect that that generator player has maximum one or two generators left in deck. I, well, never mind. I was like, without anything to normal summon, they could just lose the game by virtue of not having any monsters, but uh, that, that will do it. That will, in fact, do it. Oh, wow. Clock Wyvern. I'm going to be proven wrong on stream by the Cybers build of this deck. Man, that was that was so exciting for about one second. Normal Summon DD Crow also would have done it. Thanks, chat. Losing to Clock Wyvern, Keck W. Hey, four other people have done that so far. But a 15-turn game one. Wow. I mean, I'm not trying to say nothing, but... I can't help but think... In terms of, you know that meme that's like, the world if, uh, and then it's like um, Kanye West had written Bound 3, and it's like the futuristic world. I can't help but think that the world if Ad Emancipator and Eldritch had never been printed, and it's just games like this, you know? If the power level of the format was just a little bit lower, think of all the fun we could be having. Me explaining a meme. Thank you, yes, that is happening. <clears throat> all right time for game number two and once again looks like the uh the generator player has been forced to go first i think uh everyone's pretty happy about that only if rika still gets printed well that wouldn't change anything <clears throat> all right so we're gonna lead with the goki suprex that's probably the best normal summon in the deck infip is okay here Oh, nope. Guts and defense! Wow, you just pass on this, right? This is an FTK. Alright, so we're going to go into Isolde here. And uh, I think this time we are likely to see the effect of Isolde activate, given that last time uh, this individual drew their target. Alright, this will trigger both Guts and Isolde, and probably Suprex as well. Yep. And uh, this is the part of Goki that made it so powerful in the format where uh, summoning was just, uh, you know, like you only get one normal summon per turn was not even close to the case. Uh, I think they got two copies of, uh, of rematch there. 
You would just refill your hand after every Link Summon and use Firewall Dragon to barf these Dunguses back onto the field. So you would effectively go through like 10 or 12 Gokis over the course of the turn. Ash here is fine, but not fantastic. You know, um, summoning one monster isn't particularly powerful. You want to be summoning a multitude of them. Alright, we're going to go into Goki Guts from Grave with Living Fossil. We're going to use Headbat, targeting the Goki Guts to get it onto the field and the Iron Claw into the graveyard. <clears throat> and here we go! Generator boss fight triggers, uh, giving the opponent a monster and triggering the effect of the generator boss stage that was set off of this card. Did they draw them in Ash Blossom? Nope. They're going to go into Lopter, of course. Lopter, the most flexible of all the generator, able to tribute a generator to go into a generator from deck. You can get Har, you can get Utgarda, whatever you need. And then we will go into Utgarda it is. Just immediately. We're going to Utgarda here as well. I like it. Going to banish the headbat and says, I will not let the Link 4 make its way onto the field. It's not going to happen, folks. <clears throat> Alright, we're going into Nightmare Unicorn instead, and that's probably fine. I mean... It's a rough scenario, like there's not a fantastic unicorn hit here, you probably want to shuffle the copy of Stage, and it looks like that's what they're doing, but there's already monsters on field. Provided this copy of uh, Lopter lives, which I think it's pretty likely will happen, uh, they can just tag in main phase into a copy of Mardell and do the same thing again. What's Goki's win con? They have an unkillable boss. So they can easily go into a 4 here. You can make Appaloosa for 2. That seems pretty bad on a board full of already established chonkers. We haven't activated the effect of Octo Stretch yet, so going into a Link Rebo if they have it before going to anything else would free up some options. Looks like we're going directly into Verte Anaconda, and uh, is this the end of the game? you got to have exactly a way to negate Verte's effect, but uh, this is really frightening. I don't think it's exactly lethal. Four, five, six. Yeah, it's 900 under, but it's still quite good. So, Verte Anaconda is going to send a copy of Neos Fusion. That, of course, will turn into a Rainbow Neos. And by sending that Verte Anaconda to the graveyard, we can shuffle back all of the monsters my opponent controls. Looks like it is Trap Trick time, getting Compulsory Evacuation Device. Rainbow Neos resists destruction by virtue of the Neos Fusion in the graveyard, but Compulse does not destroy. So that's, uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> back to the deck with Yi. And though we're out of traps, I feel like, what is this? <laughs> Book of Moon? Gonna set one card, pass, come on. 2,005 cards, too good. Look at this individual out here slamming people, ending their tournament record with Compulse Book of Moon. Show me Ring of Destruction next. Let me see Scapegoat, the one of Scapegoat. Well, I mean, Generator Boss Stage is kind of just Scapegoat in and of itself. This is just modern goats. This is how, mo how goats works these days. Okay, so of course, from this position, we can go uh, from Lopter into uh, this Mardell. That Mardell is going to trigger. We can get Stage. Depending on what's in our hand, we could also get Quest. Uh, you're not really scared of Ash Blossom uh, on the Quest because they would have Ash Blossom to the Mardell or the Lopter, so we'll go ahead and fire off the Quest. And that explains why there were so many cards in hand. One of them is a Har. We'll go into a, uh, a Stage and a Fight. Book of Moon destroys Lynx. Uh, Coder W. Alright, so we're going to attack into this copy of uh, Nightmare Unicorn. Then we're going to attack into this copy of Verte Anaconda. Uh, gotta feel good about the Verte Anaconda going to the graveyard. You know, don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, of course, it was already not going to be a problem with all the targets in the grave from its previous activation. But uh, nice that the instant win button is no longer on the side of your opponent. <clears throat> and then in main two, I think we're probably going to see an activation of uh, boss stage. Oh, or or this. <laughs> we're going to true king of all calamities. That's you know that's pretty good too.
We'll set one card and pass it back to the opponent. We know that's a boss fight, and yeah, that's uh, that's a that's just about it. I think we're gonna activate stage and draw phase. That's gonna turn into a copy of um of Har. Ooh, Hala. Hala is an interesting pick. Um, this deck usually only plays one copy of Utgarda, so Hala is a way to recycle it. But the Utgarda isn't actually in the graveyard; it's currently locked under the True King of All Calamities. So they'll have to activate the True King of All Calamities, detaching the Utgarda specifically, so they can Hala it back afterwards. And it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to go into Utgarda and then activate Hala. I expect infinite impermanence on the True King is powerful, but they're still going to have the Banish at their disposal. I mean, that's nothing to sniff at. And of course, uh, for our viewers at home, important to remember, Generator Boss Stage is not a hard once per turn. Uh, its effect to summon tokens is hard, but its effect to summon a Generator is soft. So, uh, if the generator player activates at Garda, and then later in the turn, his opponent activates something you have to negate, they can flip up the fight and go into a hard from deck as well. So, rematch being activated here, that is probably fine. We're going to get a couple of Goki, and one of them is not going to be along for this world. Octo Stretch and Iron Claw. We'll see if the generator player pulls the trigger here. I, I don't even know if you do. You might wait. <laughs> drop lightning lightning does nothing against this board i guess it stops the stage Ooh, it gets rid of the tokens that that's something kind of <clears throat> all right so we're going to activate the graveyard effect of divine sword phoenix blade banishing a couple of those rainbow neos materials in order to get it back to hand And from here, we'll make a copy of Nightmare Phoenix. This is a good way to force out the activation of the boss fight if you expect your opponent is going to activate it later. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're doing. So, uh, this, this, is a, this is a hard play to make. You can chain the Utgarda, then chain the boss fight if you want access to Har this turn. But it looks like uh, being reserved with the activation of Utgarda... Uh, means that the boss fight will go to the graveyard. They will plus for two additional monsters. I don't think they've normal summoned yet. And likely we'll be able to make a four, provided the generator player doesn't shotgun the Utgarda quickly. Okay, so Suprex activation. Going into Butter Spy... Yeah, this is rough. Man. You could not guard the Phoenix here in fear of a four, like an Appaloosa. Yeah, 3200 Appaloosa would be very scary here. Uh, looks like they are going to shotgun the generator. They're targeting the two. And now all they need is like a head bat, and they can make Great Ogre through this board. Exciton Knight, let's go. Surprisingly, Exciton Knight does do it. This is a hard decision. This is certainly difficult. Looks like we are going for a four. <gasps> Silent Honor Arc. No, it only gets attack position monsters. No. It can only get the token. And tokens can't be material. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're going to activate the effect <laughs> of uh, of Divine Sword Phoenix Blade here. Why not Castell? He might not be on it. Like, I, I think probably the only reason you're on Silent Honor Arc is for, like, very specific cards. 
Like, your general extra deck plays will out everything but. And we're making Cerberus, I guess. Uh, I feel like if you were on any fours, you'd want to be on Utopia the Lightning, and that would have just ended the game. Uh, all but ended the game, I believe. No, it would have, yeah. Going to battle phase, walking over the token for a cool hundred. That's, man, that's unfortunate. Yeah, chat's correct. This is all entertainment duels. It's, uh, they're channeling the, uh, the power of, um, of, uh, Go Onizuka. You take a, pra uh, a fall and then you, uh, you climb back up. They're not dead here, I don't think. I hope I didn't count wrong. Yeah, it's 14 and 22. They are not yet dead. An evenly matched here would be pretty good also. Any other interesting matchups? This is far and away the most interesting matchup. And like Go Onizuka, uh, after hacking his brain to full capacity, he lost a set one. <laughs> Wait, he's doing the same plays as Go. He's setting guts passing. All right, let's fire off boss stage. Get ourselves a copy of Har. This is about as good as it gets. This does not lose to Lightning Storm. <laughs> Gonna call uh, Earth here, I expect. It does, however, lose to Evenly Matched. Are you able to evenly match this board legally? Because there's three tokens. This is game two? Double shifter in hand, says the Goki player. They're going to set one pass. They're going for the go play. <laughs> is Generator a contender for Rogue? Yeah. No, I think Generator is like maybe the fifth or sixth best deck. I think it probably goes Eldritch, Adamancipator, Water, uh, Salaman Great, uh, invoked something, and then maybe Generator. Mind hack overload. It was guts. It was guts. <laughs> oh, man. You can't legally evenly that board. Wow, that's frustrating. All right, and uh, looks like Generator, provided there's no Battle Vader in hand, has advanced to the go round. If they win this next one, um... Given the fact that they've been X1 for a fair amount of time, I think they are uh, all but a lock uh, for top eight. Of course, uh, one game can make all the difference, and they are likely to be facing down an Ad Emancipator or Eldlich next round. Let's keep our fingers crossed for the remaining Generator player uh, that they can stay in. Congrats to both Dunkoro and Felix on an amazing run with an absolutely ridiculous deck. Uh, just, uh, just, just amazing. Chat now saying you can evenly... Um, eh, I'll, I'll never listen to chat again. Who cares? Uh, looks like almost all the matches are done, so I am going to be taking a very, very, very short break, and then we will be back with the final round of Swiss.